Hi, my name is Ken. And my name is Jason. And today we're reviewing Art Risk. of So I kind of figured we might as well get Risk out of the way, I no. mean, uh, I don't want to do it. Anyway, Ken and I have kind of come to an understanding, we're, 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 we're going to do it, we're going to do it, and uh, it's going to be done, then Kenny doesn't have to worry about Risk coming up anymore. I don't have to worry about Risk coming up at all, it's not going to happen, we're having to do a record more today. Alright, so uh, Risk was originally published in 1959 by Parker Brothers. And uh, there are just way too many editions and versions to even mention them all here. So uh, uh, we're, we're just going to, you know, talk about the basic, you know, Risk game. It hasn't really changed that much anyway. So it hasn't, Jason. Risk is a game of global domination. Players take the role of different uh, commanders launching attacks and defending their territories by rolling six-sided dice. Highest dice will wins. Loser loses an army. Yeah. Anyway, there is a newer redesigned version of Risk out there, uh, but this, today we're actually going to go old school and talk about, uh, you know, plain old Risk. Yeah, plain old Risk. So first of all, we're going to go over the components for Risk. Uh... This is the Risk game board. Oh look, there's green territories, that's good. These are the player pieces. Oh look, they... oh, sorry, no, go ahead. Uh, oh, okay. They come in six colors. Yeah, in green. That's good. Yes. Uh, and each player has an assortment of infantry, cavalry, and artillery. These are the two decks of cards that come with the game. Oh, look, they have secret missions. It's nice. Okay, Ken. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, get through the Oh, no. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, am, I, am I interrupting? A, a little bit, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. So, these are the risk cards, and each one shows a territory on the map and either infantry, cavalry, or artillery. And these are the mission cards. They are only used uh, in one of the variant games. Uh, we won't actually be using them in this tutorial. Okay. But they essentially give you specific missions that you can uh, complete. These are the dice we're using. They're not the official dice because in between takes there, someone accidentally threw the real dice out the window. It, it could happen to anyone, man. It could just, it's just something that just happens. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you just accidentally picked up the dice and then accidentally hurled them out of a window three feet away. Uh, yeah, no, it's just, you know, it's a nervous twitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on the red dice, they're actually uh, Lord of the Rings dice, so they have the Eye of Sauron on the ones. And for the green dice, they actually come from a local gaming group, the Gelatinous Dudes, so they have their logo on the six. So, to set up this horror from beyond the veil of human consciousness... Kenny, it's not Arkham Horror. Unfold the board in the center of the table like such. Next, each player selects a color. So Jason, what do you want to play? Well, I mean, I could play green. No. No, I think we know that I'm playing green here. So out of uh, every color that is not green... I guess red. Alright. For the purposes of this review, we're going to show you the three-player setup of this game, because a two-player variant is just a little too different for what we would like, just because this game is so spectacular, and we want to make sure you have the full, awesome experience of it, because it's so awesome. So Jason, pick another color. Uh, yellow, I guess. Alright, so Jason's going to be the red and yellow players in this game. Next, we're going to roll off to see who goes first. Jason, you can take the red. So because I roll higher than Jason, I get to go first. Yay. Make sure that each player has counted out their starting armies. Because we're playing a three-player game, each player is going to start off with 35 armies apiece. So because I won the roll for starting player, I actually get to place an army first. And then we're going to continue clockwise until we've all placed our armies. So 
So after there is one army placed on every region of the board, you then reinforce each area. Reinforcements are placed one at a time, so clockwise. After all the armies have been placed, shuffle the Risk cards together and place them nearby the board. Make sure the dice are easily accessible to all players. And now you are ready to play. So there are three phases to a turn in Risk. Uh, first you place new armies, then you attack, which is optional, and then you can fortify, which is also optional. So for the first step, place new armies. First of all, you have to figure out how many armies you're entitled to. You get a number of armies equal to the number of territories you control, divided by three, rounding down. You also receive armies for any full continent you control, and each continent is color-coded. So for example, South America, which is this continent here, gives you two extra armies, according to the chart. Finally, you can also exchange risk cards for additional armies, and we'll get into that in a second. You always receive a minimum of three armies, though, regardless of how many territories you control. Armies that you earn may be placed on any territory you control, and you don't have to spread them out. You could pop them all in one if you want to. The second phase is to attack. You can declare as many attacks as you want, uh, and for each attack, basically, you just have to choose what territory you are attacking from, and it obviously has to be a territory you control, and uh, what adjacent territory you are attacking. There always have to be at least two armies in the attacking territory, however. The attacker, which is you, then chooses to roll one, two, or three dice, and you have to have at least that number plus one armies in the attacking territory. So if you want to roll three dice, you have to have at least four armies. The defender may roll one or two dice, and must have at least that many armies in the defending territory. So he has to have at least one army to roll one, and two armies to roll two. Dice are rolled simultaneously and compared. So first of all, the two highest dice are compared. So in this case it would be the five for red, and the four for green. The loser loses an army, so in this case the defender, which would be the green dice, loses one army because they have the lower score. Then if there is at least one more die on each side, the two next two highest dice are compared, so that would be the three on the green and the two on the red. In this case, the attacker, which rolls the red dice, would lose one army. If the defending armies are completely eliminated, the attacker must move at least as many armies in as the number of dice he rolled, and must leave behind at least one army. So if he, he rolled three dice, as he did in the example here, he has to move at least three armies in and leave one behind. You can declare as many attacks as you wish, and you can even declare the same attack over and over as long as you have the minimum that is required in that territory. Once you are finished attacking, if you conquered at least one territory during this turn, you take a risk card. Finally, at the very end of your turn, you may fortify your position. That means you can move as many armies as you choose from any one territory you control to any adjacent territory you control. And you have to leave at least one army in each territory. Next I'm going to go over the risk cards and how they work. So as mentioned previously, you gain one risk card at the end of any turn when, when you have actually captured at least one territory. Risk cards may be traded in at the beginning of your turn for additional armies. If you have five or six cards, you actually must trade in at least one set. To trading cards, you actually require three of a kind, or one of each kind, or any two cards plus a wild card. So you would take your set of cards, and you would tuck the cards underneath the first available slot on the board. Oh my god, can you stop explaining? Let's just get this damn game over with. Dude, come on, we're almost there. <sighs> just, just, just a few more minutes. <sighs> Why are we going? Just, come on. Just calm All down. Right. Okay. So as you can see, there are numbers along the bottom of the board. And these indicate how many armies you get from actually trading in that set. So the first set traded in gets you four, the next six, and it goes all the way up to 60. 
Also, if any of the cards that you traded in actually pictures the territory that you control, you receive an additional two armies for that set. Next up is eliminating an opponent. So if during an attack, you uh, actually eliminate the last army that a player has on the board, you immediately claim all of their risk cards. If this gives you six or more cards, you must immediately trade it in, uh, trade in enough sets so that you have four or fewer. If this gives you five or less cards, you actually have to wait until your next turn. And finally, as far as winning the game goes, uh, as we mentioned, Risk is a game of global domination. Risk is a game of global domination! Launch attacks and defend your territories by rolling six-sided dice. Highest Can't. dice roll wins. Loser Can't. loses an Can't. army. Can't. No, stop! No, don't! You gotta, put, no! Put the, put the camera back. Uh, sorry about my co-host there. He's kind of a little nuts. Right? Kenny, stop fiddling with the light. It makes me feel better. P please, come on. Just just leave it on for a second. All right. We're almost done. Okay. Okay, fine. Just, just hurry up. So as I was saying, you win the game when you have killed everyone else. When you control every single territory on the map. There, we're done. Now we can just play. Thank God. So because everything in Risk is settled with randomized dice rolls, I get to actually go first. The first step here is to count up my territories to determine how many armies I'm going to get to start off with. I have 14 territories, so 14 divided by 3 is going to give me 4 new armies. Then I get to play somewhere wherever the heck I feel like it. Next I get to attack. So first off, Jason. I'm coming from Eastern United States to Central America. Not Central America. I'm choosing to roll three dice. Jason? I'm going to roll two. So my dice are compared to Jason's. My highest dice roll is a six compared to his two. That means he loses one army. My second highest dice roll is a five compared to his next two. That means he loses yet another army. So I've destroyed Jason's two armies. I'm going to move in four armies into his territory. Next, Jason, I'm going to attack you in Venezuela. I'm going to choose to roll three more dice. Now I'm going to roll two again. I am not rolling well. So first off, my five is compared to Jason's two. He loses one army. Then my four is compared to his one. He loses yet another army. Two more down, and I take over Venezuela. Next off, Jason. I'm attacking you from Kamchatka to Alaska. I'm going to roll three dice. I'm going to roll two. All right, so my highest dice roll is a five compared to Jason's two. He loses one army. Uh, my second high highest dice roll is a two compared to Jason's one, though. He loses yet another army. All right, next off, I'm attacking you in Japan from Mongolia. So I'm going to be rolling two dice on this. And I'll be rolling one. All right, so dice are compared. My six is uh, compared to Jason's five. Uh, because I win that, I end up moving in there as well. All right, Jason, I'm going to attack you in Western Canada from the Northwest Territories. OK. I'm going to be rolling three dice. And I'm rolling two. So the highest dice are compared. My six is compared to Jason's five. He loses an army. Then my five is compared to Jason's one. He loses another army. I, I can't believe how well you're do you do at this game, Ken. Like you, you hate it so much, but you always like beat the crap out of everyone. Jason, it's because the gods of gaming have a sense of humor. <laughs> There's no other way around it. Well, I suppose it is funny. Yes. Funny. That's going to be it for my uh, global rampage. Because I conquered at least one territory, I take a risk card. Finally, I'm going to reinforce. I'm going to move my people from Alaska into Western Canada. Next is Jason's turn. Alright, so next is the yellow player's turn. So first of all, I have to determine how many armies I get. So the yellow player controls 13 territories, which again is going to give 
four armies. However, the yellow player also controls Australia, which gives him an additional two for a total of six armies. Now that I've placed my armies, I actually get to uh, make my attacks. So first of all, I am going to attack from Siam into China. Didn't, I... your, mo didn't your mother ever tell you not to get into a land war in Asia? Quite you. I'm rolling three dice, and uh, Ken? I'm going to be rolling two, I guess. Okay. So, comparing dice again, uh, Jason's highest dice is a 2, compared to my 4, that means that uh, he loses an army. Jason's second highest die is a 2, compared to my 2, since Defender wins ties, he, Jason loses another army. Alright then, so now I'm going to attack from India into China. Again, I'm rolling 3 dice. 2 for me. The dice are yet again uncompared. Jason's highest dice roll is a 6, compared to my 5. It means I lose an army. Finally! Jason's second highest die roll is a 4, compared to my 3. That means I lose yet another army. Alright, I'm going to continue the attack. So again, I'm attacking from India into China. 3 dice. And again, rolling 3 dice. I'm going to be using 2 again. So again, the dice are compared. Jason's five is compared to my four, which means I lose an army. Jason's three is compared to my one, and I lose yet another army. Jason has to move at least three armies into the new territory. I'm actually going to move four. Next, I'm going to attack from the Ukraine into Ural. So I am rolling three dice, and Ken? I guess I'm rolling two. And the dice are compared. Jason's five is compared to my five. Because defender wins ties, Jason loses an army. Jason's three is compared to my two. That means I lose an army. I am going to continue the attack from Afghanistan this time. So again, I'm rolling three dice. So rolling two. Jason's six is compared to my three. So I lose an army. Jason's five is compared to my other three. Now there's another army. So I'm going to continue again from Afghanistan, so I'm rolling three dice. Just rolling one this time. Jason's six is compared to my five, which fin finishes off your roll. Now I think my armies are already spread pretty thin. So I think I'm going to end there. So that means I do get a risk card. Thank you. And then I can fortify my position if I wish. Um, and I'm actually going to move some guys from Siam into China. All right, the yellow players complete the turn, and uh, I can see how this game is going to go down. Since the yellow player is only attacking green, this means that uh, I'm just going to get pummeled in the dirt from two fronts. So no, no, you're not. I don't see why. I have no idea why I didn't take two uh, two territories as well. Maybe I should have taken two armies. Oh come on, you'll 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 do fine. <sighs> well, we continue on from there. So we're a few more turns in, and uh, Ken has basically taken over half of the known world. I did warn you, Jason, I can only roll sixes. Yes, you did. Again, and... this is an act of comedic godding this. Uh-huh. Anyway, it's Ken's turn, so take it away. So, first off, I have... I have 28 territories. Uh, divided by three, that's going to give me nine new folks. So because I have North America and Australia in total, that's going to give me a grand total of seven more armies. I also get to play a risk set, so I actually have a three of a kind here. Uh, interestingly enough, all three of these are actually territories I control. Venezuela, Yatusk, and Northwest Territories. So it means I get a bonus two into one of those territories of my choice. In addition to the 12 armies it's going to be worth after I tuck this in here. So first I'm going to deploy those two bonus armies to the territory by choice of those three. Then I'm going to choose Yakust. Alright, so first off. 
Yellow player. That's you. I'm attacking you in Jural from Siberia. So I'm guessing you're taking two dice? Yep. I'm taking three. Dice are compared. My five to Jason's five, that means I lose one army. My five to Jason's two, Jason loses an army. So in fast forwarding the turn a little bit, uh, I defeated the red player entirely, uh, because then it actually took his cards. Um, I also gained one card because I d destroyed at least one territory, took over at least one territory, which means I have five cards in total, which means I don't get an automatic uh, pass on a risk set. Uh, at the end of my turn, I reinforced my territory, so I'm going to reinforce from Greenland to Ireland. From Greenland to Iceland, sorry. And it is now the yellow player's turn. Alright, at this point, I don't really think there's much point in continuing, so I think we should start drafting in terms of my surrender. Are you freaking kidding me, Jason? We've, we've gone this, this far! Do you have any idea how long this took? Yes, I do! You might as well just play it through, right? But I've got like seven territories. I can't win. I suppose you're right. Does, does that mean I just won a game of Risk? Yes. I think I need a shower. Okay. So Jason, what did you think of Risk? Wasn't it lovely? Um, well, yeah, it's, I guess, okay. Uh, I mean, Risk is, is a great game, but, uh, you know, it's, it's actually a little bit dated now. It's, you know, kind of old. No, I think that the longer, the Risk is kind of like a fine wine. The longer it goes on, the better it gets. It's actually better now than it ever was before. Okay. Anyway, uh, because of the extremely random nature of the game, though, I mean, games can just drag on for hours and hours. Like, eight-hour games are not out of the out of the realm of possibility, and, that, and that's just way too long. No, man. Eight hours isn't long enough. If I had my way, I would be playing Risk 24-7 for the rest of my life. Uh-huh. Anyway, so, uh, because, and also because of the randomness, it's very hard to actually implement a strategy, you know, it's just you throwing your biggest army at their smallest army and, you know, seeing what sticks, basically, which kind of sucks. Oh, no, I think that the dice are a great thing, because the dice acts as an independent arbiter between the players. Randomization is a good thing. Sure. Well... So, how do you feel about Risk, Jason? Um, personally, I, I give it a 2.5 out of 5. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, like I said, it's, it's an okay game. It's really not great for, you know, this day and age, though. But uh, what do you think, Ken? Oh, Jason, I've changed my mind entirely. I'm going to have to give Risk a 5 out of 5. R really? Oh, yeah, Risk is a perfect game. It's a game of glo global domination. Launching attacks and defending your territories by rolling six sided dice. Highest dice rolling winning and loser losing an army. Um, yeah. That's that's what it is. Yeah, and because of that it's the perfect game. It pretty much is the quintessential land grab grabbing global domination game. You just annihilate your friends and then they get to sit and watch for hours as you and everyone else plays out the entire rest of the game. All on their own. No one else to talk to. No one playing Risk with them anymore. Um, Ken, the, the, the rating? Oh, right. Sorry. Just let me... Gotta look presentable for our audience, right? Sure. So that gives us a grand total of... I CAN'T TAKE THIS ANYMORE! I never thought that I'd have to say this, but... Code Risk.